Good morning, Selamat Pagi. Um, my name is, is Charles Emerson. I'm a senior fellow at the Chatham House Research Institute in London. It's also my honor to guide you over the next two days as chair of the annual B4E Summit. And I just want to say a very few brief words uh, about what all this means before we get underway. Uh, I hope that over the next few days we will join together in discussion and debate with a view to developing our common understanding of the crucial importance of environmental sustainability, not just in terms of... There we go. Um, but in terms of biodiversity, resource efficiency, in terms of land use, in terms of energy, and in terms of supply chains. I want us to recognize that sustainability is about opportunities for us and for our organizations, in commercial terms, of course, but also in terms of our own innovation, in terms of creativity and leadership. This summit is called Business for the Environment because it is, in large part, about making the business voice heard loud and clear, about exchanging business perspectives, what works and what doesn't, and about engaging members of the business community as crucial partners for sustainability. Governments in the international community can and must create frameworks for sustainability, but often it's up to businesses to deliver it, harnessing competitive opportunities in the process. This is your summit, so please use it to the full. This is the third time that I've had the honor of chairing a B4E summit. The first was in Paris a few years ago. Uh, the second was in Mexico last year, just before Cancun. Um, but for me, this is the most exciting. And let me explain why. Uh, Indonesia is now a rising country, as we all know. Increasingly, it is a world nation. This brings new economic opportunity, but it also brings responsibilities at the level of the G20. Indonesia is not just a rule taker at the global level, but a rule maker. Indonesia's rise offers the potential for leadership. In the President's commitment to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 41% by 2020, and in the commitment to Red Plus, we see proof of this. Indonesian businesses can do and are doing the same. Unlike most countries, Indonesia is exposed to all sides of the global sustainability challenge as both a major mineral resource exporter, as a country with some of the most valuable forestry resources on Earth, increasingly valued for the ecosystem services which they provide, as well as the economic profits which they may release. As Minister Hassan reminded us last night, Indonesia, Indonesia is both vulnerable to climate change and in reforestation offers the opportunity for climate change mitigation on a global scale. Indonesia has a rapidly growing consumer market, putting pressures on land use and energy but also creating a market in which innovation can be rewarded. In a world of volatile commodity prices, sustainability at home promotes stability. In time, more efficient use of energy can reduce the drag of energy subsidies on the, on the Indonesian state. As Indonesia gets richer, it can set an example to others. In short, I see Indonesia as a critical player in the global sustainability discussion. Indonesia and Indonesian businesses have an opportunity to do things right, to make money, and to make a difference. This is a positive message, not only for domestic economic development, but in terms of Indonesia's global standing and influence. I hope that this is a message which, over the next two days, we will together turn into new relationships, new ideas, and real commitments. And I look forward to working with you to achieving this. Now, first of all, I would like to turn um, to introduce our first opening address, the Minister for the Environment of the Republic of Indonesia, Gusti Mohamed Hatta. Could you please welcome him to the stage? Thank you very much indeed. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Saya senang acara B4E. <laughs> it is indeed a great pleasure for me to be able to present at this forum, Business for Parliament Global Summit 2011. I am pleased to address such distinguished eminent persons, resource persons, and audience to discuss the important issue in, pres in preserving our planet. This forum is essential 
as a medium for changing views and ideas to offer solution and way forward in synergizing economic growth and environmental preservation to save our planet. I therefore appreciate the Business for Environment, WWF, Global Initiative, and other respective ministers for their effort to organize this global summit with the aim of delivering transformative solutions for our planet. I believe this business-driven summit will be able to explore a new approach to business leadership that align corporate goals with the biodiversity and natural capital to provide innovative, sustainable solutions and services for a clean and green economy and sustainable future. Ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, the world since the Industrial Revolution has undergone rapid and fundamental shift in the way we consume, produce, and live our daily lives. Over the last decade, we have witnessed an accelerated process of globalization that has brought tremendous benefit for people living in both the developed and developing worlds. Yet, as much as there has been a positive development, the level of poverty and environmental degradation have continued to worsen with globalization, with an expanding world population and increased international economic activities. It is no longer a time to put effort in gaining economic growth away from achieving environmental goals, as it is evident that water pollution and land degradation and other type of pollution and degradation are not solely environmental issues. It is an economic and development challenge. For, for instance, climate change and loss of biodiversity are not just an environmental challenge, and that the economic consequences of both disasters require a global long-term response. If left and abetted, Climate change does not only have the potential of unwinding years of development, but also it has the potential to dramatically affect to the future of humankind. To deal with these circumstances, we need significant additional investment as well as to shift investment patterns. This is why discussion of the green economy as a transformative solution is one that is timely and opportune. The environmental as well as economic challenges today are multifaceted and complex. These challenges require that economic development not only boosts real growth, but it must also be in line with environmental sustainability and poverty eradication. Ladies and gentlemen, Implementing green economy internalized and take into account of externalities costs in our development process, achieving a better balance in the economic, social, and environmental dimension. This ensures sustainable and inclusive growth and enhances the achievement of the sustainable development. Notably, green economy should be conducted in the context of the development that is pro poor pro job, pro growth, and pro environment. Hence, green economy needs to be translated an inclusive policy which aims on resources efficiency, eradicating poverty, creating decent jobs, and ensuring sustainable economic growth. Indonesia, under the leadership of President Yudhoyono, has translated the green economy concept into its long-term national development plan for 2005-2025 includes the goal of a green and everlasting Indonesia. It is against the Munson background. Indonesia is the view of that the green economy strategy may consist some important points such as first, promoting resource efficiency and future competitiveness to all stakeholders, including private sector and communities. 
Second, developing policy and guidelines to be implemented in the regional and local level through specific policy reforms, programs, and projects. And third, building the capacity through the demonstration project, partnership, and networking. Ladies and gentlemen, challenges that we are facing in saving the planet are actually the challenges for managing natural resources and environmental in Indonesia and other countries. Thus, it is important to emphasize that given various characteristic and level of capability of stakeholder partnership and tireless joint effort of all stakeholders shall bring us to move toward sustainable development. <laughs> to conclude, let me iterate my hope that this dialogue will result not only on focusing on defining of the green economy or green business concept, but importantly, strengthening a balance amongst human needs, preserving scarce natural resources, and environmental sustainability by engaging of all relevant stakeholders, especially business. Thank you very much for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.